Hello to all my American Horror Story historians. My name is EJ and we have a new review today. I am jumping into the next two episodes of American Horror Story NYC. We are talking about episode seven and episode eight. On this week's double feature of American Horror Story, Ooh, saying American Horror Story and Double Feature that close together gives me some PTSD. So yeah, in this week's episode with the two ones that we got, I was enthralled by them. I was really, really into them. The first one was this like crime and mystery horror one. The second one had like a looming slasher presence to it. Both of them really added something to this season. There was a lot more gore. There was a lot more WTF moments. We got more backstory with Mr. Whiteley before... Uh, his untimely death, which I'm kind of shocked that they got rid of him so early. But we also learned way more about all of our characters, seeing how twisted Henry and Sam can be, watching Theo and Adam try to make a life for themselves, but we're watching what's really happening. And I think I figured out who or what Big Daddy is. Thank you for the suggestion that has led me to kind of figure it out. The comments, you guys, I call you guys AHS historians for a reason. Y'all are smart. Y'all are thinking about shit on a different level, and I appreciate this fan base. I actually really like this season. I'm going to continue to say that every week because there are some people who are not liking it. I see the views on my video. A lot of people just are not tuning in to anything AHS NYC. I think you guys are missing out on a really creepy, serious, like dramatic. This is a real... This reminds me of Asylum and Freak Show, that real serious tone. There is a campy element because it's Ryan Murphy, it's American Horror Story, we're talking about gay people in NYC, but there's still a serious nature to it and it really hits me hard. All right, enough of this review. We know how I feel about the season. We know I like these two episodes. Now let's get into the recap. The first half of episode seven, which is dubbed The Sentinel, has a lot of the crime stuff, but it has a lot of Gino and Patrick working together for real, it seems like the first time I've ever seen these two bond is when they're trying to like hunt for a serial killer. It's kind of cute. I actually kind of liked Gino and Patrick in these two episodes. Patrick, though, uh, Russell Toby, why are you so fine but so insufferable as a character in almost everything? Oh, Mr. Toby. But yeah, I liked Gino and Patrick trying to go after Mr. Whiteley. They're trying to save Henry, and they go into his facility. They think they're going to be big ass, you know, big ass, like crime boss kind of dudes. And yeah, no, Whiteley knocks them out and says, well, here's my master plan. Here's what I'm doing. He has Patrick separated. He seems to appreciate what Patrick's trying to do or trying to say, you know, speaking up for things. But Whiteley has a different way of doing it. He's making the Sentinel, which is a a representation of the, the victimhood of the sad tragedies that's happening to the gay community in NYC at this time. Whiteley is done with it, and he wants to show everyone the pain that they're really ignoring. So he's put all these bodies together in this Frankenstein angel creepy ass thing. It, to me, the way he was describing it, the way it put... The, the horrors of the gay community at this time in front of people's faces, it kind of reminds me of what they were trying to do with the AIDS quilt, of trying to be like, this is what's happening, here's a physical representation. Whiteley just says, hmm, I don't think um, a, a quilt's going to do it. I need to show you the actual horror and the terror you all committing. And that's what he explains to Patrick. He's trying to get Patrick's heart and put it into the body. While all that's happening, Gino and Henry are in a goddamn Saw movie where he's like trying to get his hand out of this. And I'm like, oh, I've seen Gerald's game. That's not going to end well. And then he just, Henry just cuts his hand off. And I'm like, the gore, the intensity, this was such a good moment and it really scared the hell out of me. Right before Patrick loses his heart to Mr. Whiteley, Gino and Henry come in. I mean, Gino has a chainsaw. It's a pretty funny scene watching these men come in and attack Whiteley. But there's a moment where Patrick has the gun pointed at Whiteley and he says like, I'm going to do this. This is what we have to do to end you. And then a bunch of ghosts come up behind him. Is it like the people Whiteley's doing it? It's very odd because these ghostly presences pop up in another episode, which we'll talk about the end of episode eight. And while it's not my personal favorite, but yeah, there was a lot of weirdness here. But Patrick shakes it off, shoots Whiteley in the head, and he is dead. The Mai Tai killer is dead. They print the story. 
And yes, this also leads Patrick to coming out, quitting his job ish. Like he seems to be working with the you know the police force, but doesn't they don't respect him, so he doesn't respect them. This was a big moment. This whole first half of this first episode, when we were getting all the Mai Tai Killer stuff wrapping up that story, which wow, a story was wrapped up before the final episodes. American Horror Story, what are you doing? That's strange. The second half of episode seven has a lot more of our characters in here. We having like Patrick try to have Adam look for his friend. Remember the friend who's been missing since the first episode? They're trying to find him in the bodies of the Sentinel. It's hard to tell, but we're also seeing Hannah discuss that people are disappearing. Like the, the people who are getting sick aren't just like showing up dead bodies right here. They're disappearing. What does that mean? Like, I know a lot of you guys feel the, the the sickness isn't going to be the obvious choice of where it's obviously going, but what could it be? Like, what else? Like, I don't know what they're doing with this. Hannah seems to be in a messy spot. She's getting really, really sick. It seems like people are getting sick faster than other people. We're seeing, like, in the next episode, Theo and Hannah, obviously, in this episode, are very sick. But Patrick and Gino are just getting the lesions, and they're just getting kind of sick, but not as bad as the other ones. I'm curious on what that's going to be. This also has the moment where Gino prints the pride story, where he kind of agrees with Whitley's point of view of needing to put representation to the community, really showing the hardships of what's going on and putting the brutality in front of everyone's faces, just not in the way Whitley wanted to do it. And yeah, I like it. I like this ending. I thought the, the pride speech was really good, showing where everyone's at. We also have Gino, or uh, sorry, we also have Patrick Singh, like his dead wife, which that comes into the next episode. Patrick seeing a lot of ghosts. Don't know what that means. Maybe he's a little bit uh, uh, closer to death, or maybe he's just being able to be in touch with the dead bodies. It's pretty crazy. But yeah, I really liked episode seven. It was a strong kind of, here's everything that's going to happen. Episode eight, not as strong, but there's some definitely some movement with the plot, at least. If episode eight was a Friends episode, I would call this one the one on Fire Island. This is all set in Fire Island. We're mostly focusing on our main kind of the, the dudes, but Fran is here. Sandra Bernhardt is at the island. She sees Big Daddy at one point. He like attacks like the group of lesbians. And I'm like, but what's Big Daddy's point? Why is he looming here? Let me just get my theory out of the way. I believe Big Daddy is the Grim Reaper, the one kind of showing people the, the paths to the end of their lives. Like, it's odd that he's hanging around Fran, but she seems to be keep pulling those death cards. There's a scene where she goes to Sam's party and reads everyone's tarot and is pulling death card after death card after death card. Is she kind of predicting, obviously, what's happening to these people? But what is Big Daddy's role? Why is he showing to certain people? I mean, he even gets shot in the back of the head today and still walks away with it. So he's obviously not real. We all thought it was Patrick, but Patrick's the one who shoots him, so... I think he's just a, a ghostly, you know, a very grim reaper kind of like we're taking you to the afterlife because we've never seen him actually physically kill somebody. I guess he kind of did with Barb, but I don't know. I'm, I'm really, I'm confused on the Big Daddy stuff, but this was definitely another heavy Big Daddy episode where we're still not finding out. I think we're going to find out in the finale. So yeah, we're all on Fire Island. Everyone's here and some hectic shit is about to go down. Patrick and Gino seem to be in a good spot, but they're both realizing how sick that they're getting. Theo and Adam are here, and Theo is very, very sick. Like, his story gets real sad at the end of this episode because I like Theo's character, but as long as Gino doesn't get hurt, I will be fine. I want him to be able to walk out of the season the only one unscathed because everyone, I just think everyone's going to die. It's getting real brutal for our characters out here. As per usual, Patrick's upset, gets mad at Adam, gets mad at Gino, does his own thing. But also we're having Henry confess his love to Gino and saying like, if I can't have you, no one will, which is always something scary to say and always leads to great things because Henry definitely makes some very bold decisions here. Sam's also on the island, very jealous of Adam and Theo, and I kind of, I'll, I'll kind of wrap up their stuff. Sam basically drugs Theo, ties him up into the woods, and lets Henry play with him, kind of tells Henry that Theo is willing and able, so I don't really blame Henry here, even though he's a bit twisted. He seems to be just a lost, sadder, older gay man, you know, talking to Theo about the beauty that won't last. I liked this moment. I thought it was very hard-hitting. It just was very shocking. And as this happening, as this big end of the episode is going down, we're seeing like Big Daddy watch and then Big Daddy disappears. Henry leaves and Theo is left with these ghostly gay angels. Are there other victims of Big Daddy? Are there other victims of the sickness? 
what was this moment? It was very spiritual, it was very weird, it felt very Angels in America, which was not the vibe I was thinking this episode was going to be, but I was I was shocked by this. And then it seems like the preview for next week is very much in this mystical, spiritual realm, so I'm kind of confused, but I thought this ending was a bold what the hell moment. We are seeing the very end of American Horror Story NYC in front of us. We're in a really good spot. We know how dirty and evil Sam is, but he's about to get really sick in the next episode. We're seeing how twisted and sad Henry is, but what's going to happen with him? Gino and Patrick are obviously not going to stay together, but who's going to live? What the hell is going to happen in the next episodes of American Horror Story NYC? I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. I'm just, I'm emotional. I'm, I'm sad. This is a really hard-hitting season, but I really enjoyed. I really liked both of these episodes. Episode 8 didn't have as much juicy details as I wanted to, but I definitely think it's set up where we're going to be for the final episodes very well. What did you guys think of this episode? What did you think of my review? Share your feelings down in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel because I make videos like this every single week. And if you do like Ryan Murphy stuff, I will be talking about Nip Tuck very soon. I cannot wait. All right, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, all that jazz. Let's talk about NYC down below. <laughs>